presence here today. And Lord, we just pray a huge blessing on Sam and Cindy. And Lord, we thank you for the commitments that they're about to make to you. Holy Spirit, would you strengthen them and bless them and help them to honor those commitments throughout their whole days, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Just a job going through there. Yeah, yeah, check some email while uh, Cindy comes over here. I'll take a little bit of time. Oh, okay, good. She's Well, Sam and Cindy, this is it. Today is the day. Who else is excited? <laughs> we, uh, we've had a great journey together, for sure. Uh, I've known you for about five years, right? Give or take. And Sam, you were in our youth group when I was a youth pastor here about five years ago. <laughs> and just watching you guys grow up and, and being part of young adults and having you guys in my home sharing some of the things that Ali and I have learned together in marriage and just having lots of fun, good conversations. Um, we're just really blessed that we could walk this road with you. Uh, part of the, the theme for today is that they really want to honor God. They told me that. We really want to honor God in this. this is, it's our day, but it's really the Lord's day, right? <clears throat> we want to bless God, but also to honor family and friends. And so they're really glad that you're here sharing this day. And we hope that throughout this whole day that you'll feel that sense that they are so blessed to have you call you as friends and family. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So, honoring God. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. Honoring friends and family. And I know that's your desire to live those things out. The metaphor also that Sam and Cindy chose for this special day is the metaphor of journey. And not that 1970s rock band journey that we talked about. It's the journey of, of, of walking with one another. Now when you think about all great human journeys, and I just thought of a few, maybe backpacking through a continent, or climbing Mount Everest, or maybe even going to the moon, whatever, whatever that journey might be. I would contend that marriage is right up in there with one of the most exhilarating journeys that you could possibly go on. Because the similarities are similar in the sense that, yes, they are both very difficult, right? For sure. It requires a lot of commitment and definitely a lot of dedication. But if you pursue it passionately, I think the payoff far outweighs any cost that you'll ever come across and will create for you moments and memories that will last your whole life. There are these mile markers in your life and in your journey that when you look back, you can see the people that have influenced you, or the decisions that you've made, or, or the path that you've chosen, that have led you to a moment like this. And I know that you're thankful for your family, and you're thankful for your friends that have sown into you, and they've blessed you, and they've encouraged you. And now you're about to start a new journey, a new season of life, together. And as you start your journey together, if I could just share a few principles. I've already kind of harped at you on how to live a good, a healthy marriage, but let me just say just a few more, if I could, uh, using this metaphor of the journey. And first of all, this is a journey. It is not a competition. <laughs> well, then let me throw out this. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you've watched, have you ever seen The Amazing Race? Have you seen it? Yeah. I don't like watching it because there's a lot of exercise in it. But when you think about The Amazing Race, right, it's two people strapped together, and, and a lot of times they're couples or family members or whatever, and they're called just to go, and they're called just to win. And if they're not in step or in unity, you see a lot of disunity, a lot of discord, a lot of anger, confusion that takes place. People only win in that, in that race when you win as a team. Or say, for instance, if you go hiking alone, you can move at your own pace. You can go as fast or as slow as you want, but once you're married, there's someone now who wants to walk with you. That means now you must sync your pace with their pace. That whenever they ask you, because someone might have longer legs than the other, to wait up, I'm not saying who, I'm just saying, that you will, you will wait up, because you have chosen to enjoy this journey together. Amos 3.3 says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? And the answer is, of course not. 
Marriage then could be characterized by a long friendship in the same direction. And I pray that would be the case for you. And in some marriages, people commit, um, or people will commit to having the same last name, but they will still go in opposite directions, or they'll have opposite or opposing values, or maybe a completely different vision for their future. But I pray that would not be the case for you. Ecclesiastes 4 says, or Ecclesiastes 4 says, two people are better than one. They can help each other uh, succeed, but if one person falls, the other person can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying down together can keep each other warm. But how can one keep each or one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. So in your marriage, may you move from, and I don't even know if you're here, I don't even think you're here, but that you would move from competition to cooperation. Although you did say you'll win, so yes, <laughs> I claim this on your marriage that you will <laughs> competition to cooperation, that you'll trust each other that you'll always tell the truth, that you won't be afraid to say sorry, and that your marriage will be marked by a long friendship in the same direction. But not only do you journey together, you also share the load and you look out for one another. Now, Cindy, you are a school teacher. I didn't get a chance to ask you this, but um, do you, does everyone remember if you're in school, the buddy system? Does everybody remember the buddy system? Where you had to choose a buddy. When you go on a field trip, you needed to pick a buddy, right? You were tasked to watch out for that buddy and help that buddy and make sure that your buddy got to where they were going. Okay. But as we get older in life, we tend to be more self-reliant. And when we think of our journey, we tend to pack really only what we think we might need for the journey. But in your marriage, however, you are called back to the buddy system. You walk beside each other, you help each other out, and you even pack now with the other person in mind, not just yourself. Scripture says that in marriage, you are one flesh, but how are you to live that out? And so I've read this before, but uh, we are to have the same attitude with, with each other as Christ has for his church. That in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body. But he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For we are one members, or for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his mother and father and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. So that's the start of the journey. And this is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must also love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect the husband and sharing the burden. So always remember that God has gifted you with each other and has given you gifts for each other. So that makes your marriage more than just, uh, or this journey is not just about a marriage, but now it's like a ministry. You now are entering into a ministry for one another. Scripture says that each one of you should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. And your verse that you, that you love. So, so in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all others. So really and truly, when you ask yourself, what gifts have God given you that you will bring into this marriage, that you will now share the love? Because Scripture says that each of you should now look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And so, during our time of uh, marriage preparation, I had asked them, uh, <laughs> what do you think the greatest strengths are in your marriage? And you guys have not heard this yet from each other. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> but this comes from each other's hearts for each other. Cindy, Sam said about you that you work so great with people, especially with kids. You are just so wonderful and kind, and that you're selfless, and that you put others first, and that you challenge others to be better, and for the better. He says, often it results in stretching me from doing what I normally do to trying something different. <laughs> Sam, Cindy said this about you, that you are excellent with money, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> with coupons and red <laughs> You know, I was actually thinking, if you're great with kids and he's great with money, what are your kids getting for allowances? That's what I would love to know. Keep, keep a sitting. But generally, you are very calm and you're laid back. That you're able to resolve any issues, especially when she's feeling tense or overwhelmed. And that you're generous. You have such a generous heart for those who are in need. That you love to help out family, friends, and even strangers whenever the time arises. 
So in your marriage, may your journey be marked by the buddy system, where you look out for each other, where when one is weak, the other can be strong. That you will look out for each other and you'll use your gifts and your talents and your abilities that God give you in service to one another, so that both of you can make it safely on your journey. At this time, I'd like to invite the parents of both the bride and groom to come forward. Uh, seeing that they want to honor family and friends, and recognizing that a marriage is not just two people uniting, but two families. Um, the families are going to be giving an exchange of roses that will be symbols and tokens of the unity of these two families coming together. You can come at this time. Marking them once as strangers, now they are friends and family. That you'll commit to each other and sacrifice for each other and, and love one another. Finally, and most importantly, in your journey together, trust God for the destination. Every good journey has a destination in mind, unless you're content to just wander aimlessly, which, judging by the way you've made lists for this wedding, I know that is not your desire at all, Sydney. Very focused. So when you board a plane or you get into a car, usually you're thinking of arriving at your destination. And so it is, as Christ follows, our desire is to love and serve God, and now you two get to serve Him together. You get to journey together towards that destination. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I believe that strong and healthy marriages have God at the center. Your marriage is a partnership, not just with each other, but with God. And when you have times of trial and conflict, I encourage you to look to